Good afternoon or morning, muchachos. So I was gonna do uh, the whole bushings and coilovers on the RX-7 today for this video, but uh, I learned that in RX-7s, the ball joints are non-replaceable, so I have to order new control arms. So I'm gonna set that aside for its own video still. I'm gonna buy the new control arms today, both upper and lower, because the ball joints are just shot in this car, and for some reason Mazda made it so that way you can't replace them, so instead, we're gonna be bridge porting our 13B today. The actual bridge portion of this will go on the front and the rear part of the irons. The part without the bridge goes on the center iron. So we're gonna come back and do this portion of the bridge later. We're gonna start out by opening up the port. Actually, no, we'll probably start with the middle. So I've got the middle iron set up right now. As you guys can see, this is how much it's going to open it up. It doesn't open up a crazy amount. This is considered a street port and a half bridge. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and pull these dowels off of here get this plate out of the way, and I'm gonna go ahead and use a paint marker and just paint this whole area right here. Then we're gonna put our half bridge template back on the iron, go ahead and scribe it with something. Once it's been scribed, we can take the template off and we're gonna mask the whole area around where we're gonna be porting with duct tape to ensure that we don't nick the sealing surface. Because remember, this part of the iron is a sealing surface. This is where the compression stays in. It's where the magic happens. The bada bing, bada boom. So let's get some paint here, our template put on, and then we'll go ahead and scribe it all. Whole port, we're just gonna paint pen it all. I wish my paint pen had more paint in it. Put our template on top of it dowels in to locate it. Then we're gonna scribe it. That's it. All right, now I can see where I've got to port around it. So now, this is where we're gonna start layering stuff up with duct tape to ensure that if, for the love of everything good in the world, the Dremel slips on me or everything bad in the world, and the Dremel slips, the tape may act as a barrier. It probably won't, but you know, it's better to have it here, I guess, than not have it here. So, start opening up the port. I know there's cooling jackets that run underneath of some of these, so I'll probably start up on the top and then start working my way down. Uh, we don't want to pierce the cooling jacket. That's the last thing that we want. I feel like this is a relatively small port, so it shouldn't be shouldn't be too bad. I know there's a cooling jacket right here that runs up into the center of the rotor, so. Just wanna make sure that we don't puncture through. We're not even close to being done with it on this side yet, but we've got the general shape of the port done. So you can see how much larger that actually is compared to that side, which is way smaller. So now that we've got the general shape of this one done, I'm gonna go ahead and do the general shape of the other side also. And then once both of the center irons are enlarged like this, we'll actually start cleaning up the inside. Dude, that's way bigger. We're gonna clean up, clean up the shape of it a little bit too, but actually let me, uh, let me grab this and set it on there to see how it looks. So with the template on there, dude, that's it's actually not bad, it's pretty spot on. So I mean, we could probably take a little bit more off the top up here, but that's not too bad. So what we just did to the side, we're gonna do to the other side. So we're gonna go ahead and flip this guy over, get our template put on the other side, and then start porting the other side of the iron, the, the, the doodad, the dealio.
Here on our center iron, I've kind of gotten the shape of the port done on uh, both sides of this. We do need to port the inside of where the, or the opening right here. Uh, and then after that, we need to polish it and just kind of get it to how we want. But the size of the port, the opening and the internal side of it is pretty much ported out. Now we're doing a, what's called a half bridge on this. Now, why you would go through and do this on a rotary is because there's no, there's no cylinder head, there's no camshafts or anything like that. The only way to get more air in and out of the engine, physically speaking, is by enlarging these ports. Now, when you go and you do a full bridge on a rotary, it makes it very difficult to tune idle. It heavily increases fuel consumption, everything like that. So for us, we're doing what's called a half bridge. In the half bridge, you don't do a bridge on the center iron. So both sides of the center iron, all we did was go through and enlarge the port for air. Now on the front and the rear iron, which this is the rear iron, this gets the bridge. So the bridge is the secondary port here, which I've already gone through and scribed. So you can see that it's got a secondary port right there. Now what we're gonna end up doing is drill some very small pilot holes to get us going. We need to be very careful in this area because there is that coolant seal right next to it. This other port right here, that one will be easy to open up and enlarge, but it's that bridge that's going to be very careful. So we're gonna go ahead and do some, what is the word? You, you do it, you dimple it, you start it for a drill bit, you know what I mean. We're gonna have to be very careful with it. We're gonna use some very small drill bits, drill a whole bunch of very small holes, uh, and then take our tools, our very small pencil tools that I have in here to be able to do that. So I think I'm going to start on the actual porting of the pocket first before I go ahead and attempt to do the bridge so that way I can warm up a little bit. So let's open up this port here and then we'll start uh, shaping our bridge. <laughs> Okay, we're a little bit in the future. I've been playing with this Forester, doing some tuning on it. So anyways, um, on, on our irons, I, I had a major boo-boo. On our rear iron here, I got the porting done, but I kind of messed up and I blew through the exhaust port into the coolant chamber. And I have quickly learned how expensive these irons are um, you can't really buy these anymore, so I had to buy a second hand one off of eBay and there was only one on eBay and apparently it's different between manual and automatic for the irons, which I thought was really weird, but I already got a new iron ordered, $900. This is a $900 mistake. I learned that with the template I'm using, don't go all the way to the end of the template or you're gonna blow through into the coolant jacket. I've already gone through and ported the front iron. Didn't blow through the cooling jacket, so that's a, that's a plus. So on our front iron here, I went through, we've got the bridge done on it. We've got the port shaped. We just need to enlarge the ports now and then polish them for the center iron and the front iron. The rear iron, I'm gonna have to wait till the new one comes in, which sucks, but that's what I get for we're blowing through it. So I'm gonna do a little bit more, I'm gonna do a little bit more porting on these with the tools that I have now. We'll go to the hardware store in a little bit and go get the stuff to be able to use the longer ports to be able to actually port out the exit for those chambers. But something that's like super important, I'll show you guys te the template on the, on the irons here shortly, but you just gotta be very, very, very careful with it. Here 
otherwise everything looks good right now. I am pretty happy with the porting on the center iron. Both of them came out super nice, super clean, and very smooth going in there. So the porting on the center iron came out great, didn't blow through. The porting on the front iron also came out perfect like absolutely perfect no blowouts no blowing through you guys can see how much more that has just opened up we've got our half bridge right there we've got our bridge on there also i went through and i scotch brighted and cleaned the rotor so these are good to go there most definitely is you guys can see it i totally blew through there and that that right there is my 900 dollars mistake which uh you know it sucks live and learn i know next time not to do that now so you know what it only takes one time to learn. Now on this iron, what I did differently, A, just to prove it, just so you can see there's no light coming through on this one. What I did different is I chamfered the tip of it this time instead of following the port all the way up. So it's got a small chamfer now that runs into that bridge on there. And that allowed me to not blow through, not get into the cooling jacket. So, you know, lesson learned. A lot of people ask me how I learned to do the things I do, like, uh, like with the Subaru stuff, building engines, porting rotaries and whatnot. This is my first time porting a rotary. I fucked up. New one's ordered, but regardless of the fact, this is how I learned to do things is I just do them. Like, yeah, I'm gonna make mistakes. I'm fully aware I'm gonna make mistakes. I'm not gonna hide my mistakes from you guys. So that way, if anybody watching this goes to do this, and I'm using specifically the Mazda Trix uh, bridge port or half bridge template. Specifically, if you do what I do, avoid the mistakes that I make. But that new iron, it said it'll be here like May 12th or something like that, which sucks because I really wanted to assemble this engine tomorrow. Can't until I get the new rotor housing and we go through, oh, UPS is here. We can't until we go through and rebridge port the new one, but it's not the end of the world. It's all money. I'd rather have the learning experience. So for tonight, we're going to stop. We'll come back out in the morning. We'll get the... We'll take a break from the engine. We're gonna get the coilovers put on. I'm gonna get those rear or those control arms ordered. We'll get, once those come in, we'll take the front coilovers back off to get those control arms on. It's not a big deal, but I think I'm pretty happy with the progress on the irons. I'm a little disappointed in myself for destroying the, the rear iron, but live and learn, right? So because we're on standby right now for our engine until we get that new rear iron in, there's not too much else I can do on the engine until it comes in. So what we're gonna do is play a quick game of wheel swap and then get the coilovers installed on the RX-7. Like I said, once those new uh, upper control arms and lower control arms come in, we'll pull off the front coilovers and put those back on the car with the new ball joints and everything like that. But just for the sake of clearing up boxes and getting things kind of picked up a little bit more, we're just going to get them installed uh, and get the wheels or the regmasters put on there because my wheel spacers for the WRX came in. So that means I can put those RPF ones on there. Ooh, you're going on a Mazda. RPF one, welcome to your new home. There we go. We got the WRX chilling on RPF1s and I gotta say, it looks pretty good. Pretty, I mean, RPF1s look good on everything. So it's kind of a cheat code, but I like them. I dig them. They sit pretty well. They sit pretty flush with the car. Everything looks good on RPF1, so sick. That means we've got our Regamasters off and ready for the RX-7. So we're gonna go through here and swap in the new BC coilovers. Cause after destroying that engine iron, I'd like to feel a little bit of a win. So putting coilovers in is going to be that win for me. Now it looks pretty easy on this car. It looks like we just have the one bolt that runs through the upper control arm here. It'll knock that guy out. So we'll take out, oh no, that's like the end link also. So it looks like the end link comes out with this. I'm not entirely sure, but we'll figure it out. So I'm gonna go through here, start playing with this, try to get these guys out. Uh, we'll get this rear shock out and then we can jump over, open up that box of BC Racing and uh, toss in some new good coilovers. Yep. All right, so how do I hold that? Do I take the end link off? I think I have to take this freaking end link off. 
Now I uh, just gotta figure out how to get it out from the top. Then that's it. Dude, that's super easy on these things. This uh, whole upper, oh, dude, dude, look at that. Okay. Oh, I got that out. I feel like I should just take this arm out and just swap these bushings real quick. Maybe not. Oh my God. It all makes sense now. I can't not do it. I'm gonna do the bushings. It's gonna work. And then get the ladder up there, so it's gonna make my life incredibly more difficult. One bushing down, now we do that one. I don't know why I enjoy making my life more difficult than it needs to be. I've got the coilover in right now. Fits perfect as it should. Went to replace some bushings in this control arm. We got the shock absorber one done. Went to do this one, realized I don't have this bushing in the kit. So pressed it out anyways, cause it was a blown out bushing. So I have to buy a replacement for it. Uh, went to do these rear ones. Cannot get the rear ones out to save my life. So I'm not gonna stress it. We're just gonna jump to the other side. I'll order this bushing here. We'll go ahead and get this put back in for right now. I'm missing the bushing, so it's not like I can hold the knuckle up at all, so it kind of sucks, but it's whatever. It was blown out, kind of had to get it out regardless of the fact, so we'll get that arm back in, jump over to the other side, just get the coilover in on the other side, and then put the front coilovers in. I don't know why I'm trying to make my life way more difficult by swapping out every single bushing. I mean, I have the kit, and the ones that are blown out, I'm pressing out and swapping out. It's just, dude, I don't know why I do this to myself every single time. arm we're gonna press this one bushing out replace it get this arm back in get the coil over permanently put up on this side got all the coilovers in, some of them temporarily, other ones uh, a little more permanent. This one is temporary because I am gonna have to pull that upper arm back out to be able to get that new radial bearing to go in there that connects up to the hub. It's got one of the, um, it's got a radial bearing in it. Uh, up in the front, these are temporarily installed also because the upper control arms need to come out to be replaced by new ones. This is the ball joint that I was talking about at the beginning of the video that's non-replaceable. Uh, the lower one is also non-replaceable, but that one looks okay. These upper ones are shot. So we're just gonna buy complete upper new control arms. I'm not even gonna replace the bushings in them. There's no need if I'm buying brand new ones that come with brand new bushings in them. Uh, but overall, I have the back left wheel on with the new coilovers in, and I think the car's gonna sit way better with these. I mean, I can't put it back on the ground right now up until I get the new stuff. I might go to Atkins tomorrow to go get the new bearings because they have them, but I think with the Regamasters on here and a proper uh, size tire and fitment, I think this thing's gonna look so freaking good, dude. Overall, I feel like we got really good progress done on the RX-7 today. We've got two out of three of the rotor housings ported. We've got everything ready back here for reassembly for the new 13B setup. We've got our new coilovers in. We've re replaced some bushings, not all of them. We have replaced some. You just gotta remember that on these older cars, especially ones that are like 20 years old and older, there's just so much stuff that father time destroys on these cars and they need a lot of attention, a lot of love and a good chunk of change to fix them all. But I'm really excited for the RX-7 once it actually is working. I'm hoping to have the RX-7 working by the end of summer. 
I was hoping it would be a little bit more of a quicker build, but I don't know if it's going to be that way just because everything seems to be adding up quite quickly. But if you guys want to help speed up the RX-7 build and potentially win an EJ25 built for 500 wheel horsepower, we got our giveaway going on with all sorts of designs on there, RX-7 stuff, Subaru stuff, uh, General Smedia stuff. Remember, every $25 you guys spend on merch gets you one entry into that giveaway. And you guys know everything that we make on those drops goes back into the channel for the cars. One more thing before I end this video out, because I'm about to end this video out, our engine for blue comes back on Tuesday. So that means we're gonna be taking a small break from the RX-7 stuff to get the 17 STI working again. Everybody say hello to Matt. Matt didn't even say hi you to you have guys. One more, just you wait. have one th more thing to mention. Do I? Every giveaway. Oh, the scams? There come scams. The only person that's going to tell you about the giveaway is going to be Tanner from the Smedia account. It will not be from if anybody there is else. Smedia team or Smedia competition winners or Some Telegram group, thing. something else like that. That is it's not, not Tanner. He nope. doesn't have any of that stuff. No, I forgot. That happens every time. There was an Instagram account today that somebody like tried to steal. If it's not directly from me, A, I will never ask you for money. B, I will not ask you to cover shipping. C, if it doesn't sound like me and if I hit you up on like Telegram or WhatsApp, I don't even have Telegram or WhatsApp, so don't fall for that crap. But that's all I got for you guys on this one. If you guys like the video, you know what to do. Go ahead and hit that like button, turn your black, blue, green, yellow, purple, silver, cyan, whatever color it is for you. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel and you want to be one of these corners, no idea which one I'll put it in quite yet. But with that, I will catch you guys in the next one. So peace out, homies.